Hi, I'm Senior Editor of Paramodi, Dan Harding. We're here today in Miami, Florida at the Midnight Express Powerboat Facility. Now, for those of you that don't know, these center consoles are high performance boats, usually paired with three, four, sometimes five outboards. So I think we're gonna have a fast day ahead and uh, we're gonna go check out the facility. One of Eric Glazer's primary responsibilities as the engineer of Midnight Express is creating custom modifications for the many 34, 37, 39, and 43 foot center consoles that are usually paired with triple, quad, and quint outboard configurations that fill his order book. He normally deals with such things as adding sport fish options or one of a kind sound system to a particular model. And then there are the molds for the new 60 footer that he's just chopping at the bit to continue building. But all these projects handled completely in-house, pale in comparison to the importance of Eric's most recent custom build, a boat that would allow his father to get back out on the water. Passing a fleet of molds, Eric explains with palpable pride that they've been infusing and using Dynacell coring on every part of their boats, hull to hardtop, for three years now. Strength, 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 says Eric. That's what Midnight Express is all about. After running the boat and putting it through its paces, we had the chance to sit down with Eric and Bert and talk about this unique project. Eric, growing up, had an engineering design mindset, and he um, uh, would uh, design and, and build boats in our basement. Like I think I told you, we were the only people on the block with a paint booth in our in our <laughs> in our basement. He went to college at Boston University, where he had majored in engineering. Came down here, got a job with a boat manufacturing company, and then. Um, we decided to purchase Midnight Express. And unfortunately in 2009, I had a motorcycle accident where I uh, became a paraplegic. Um, and then the challenge, be one of the challenges was, you know, could I get back in a boat and could I continue boating? Can you tell me a little bit about some of the challenges you guys faced in the design process? When we first started to put side doors in the boats, one of the very first specifications was that it be wide enough that I could roll my wheelchair onto the boat. So this is one of the only side doors on any boat that's this wide. If you look at most of the side doors on similar boats, you'll see they're much narrower. Okay, so we developed a side door that was wide enough to get, to get the boat across, but and also was integrated into the overall um, uh, structure of the boat so that we could run this boat at 60 miles an hour without the door even in. So it's totally, and you'll never see cracks around the edges. Our doors are really designed um, so that they could uh, withstand all the stress, but yet they're this wide, so I can roll my wheelchair right across. With them being very wide, the stresses are very difficult to overcome. And as I showed you at the factory, all the reinforcements we did, how everything's molded in, overlapping, just everything's double, triple strong. We wanted to do all these additions to the boat without changing the boat without making it so oh we can't use this because we have the wheelchair accessible stuff everything in this boat's the same um, the only difference is I, I had to flush the platform in because we didn't want the platform sticking up uh, so we had to make the recess as a one-off piece in the mold um, again it's not something we cut and then put in we molded it like this and then also the tracks for the helm seat that slides back I didn't want them sticking up so that when other people are walking around, they're stubbing their toe, getting cut, or whatever. So everything is subset in the floor. Again, molded in that way. So we added special one-off inserts to make everything fit into the mold. The thing, um, when you're sitting all the time and you're in rough water, um, the pounding really can hurt you. And then for my father, from his accident, his back is weaker, I'm saying, right? Yeah. So it, it really couldn't handle the beating. So we made these seats that had to do two functions. One, they had to squat down and slide back so he can get in it. And then the other is be shock absorbing. So we took a shock from an off-road, uh, like one of those uh, huge trucks you see jumping in the sand and stuff. Oh, no kidding. So those are shocks, the shocks we used in here. They're air shocks, so I can let the air out and it'll squat down or I can just let just a little air out and it'll react more and give you more cushion. Um, so it's totally adjustable. 
and then there's another switch that ch changes the height of your ride and another switch brings the seat all the way back. Uh, no. And then the final thing is the dash we made custom. We brought everything closer so that he didn't have to lean over when he's sitting because again, it's hard on his back. It's hard on anybody's back. If you're leaning over, you're gonna get worn out. So this way you can still sit back, all the controls are right there, your screens are closer, uh, and then everything on this boat is controlled through the screens or through a, a wireless remote. So you don't have to go downstairs, turn your batteries on, you hit a button. Uh, lift the ramp up, it's all through buttons on the remote. You don't have to have someone separate doing it. And the other thing is, for, for docking, because my spine is fused, I can't turn as well. So we have cameras in so that we get almost a 360 degree view uh, on the screen, uh, um, uh, on, the, on the dash, so that I can see where the dock is and where I am relative to the dock. How soon after your accident did you guys start designing this boat? Oh, well, he started asking about it right away. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, but I, I had some recovery issues. There were things that, that I needed to go through to get, uh, I had, you know, just a bunch of things. So it took a couple of, two, three years before I could even seriously think about it. And then I had a couple of other setbacks. So it's been a little bit on and off, but thank God now I'm healthy and it's, so now we're ready to do it. Eric, right, can you tell me a little about what this design meant to you? I mean, you've designed hundreds of boats for hundreds of clients. Uh, what did this one mean to you? It was, it was definitely more challenging because of the, spe the specific things that we had to accomplish. Sure. Um, uh, but it was also good because my father was very easy on me, so he didn't yell at me when it wasn't right the first time. Okay. <laughs> Where our typical customers want it right the first time. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and it, you, you, it's a good feeling to give something back to my father as well. In boat building, as in life, there are many challenges. And some of them wake you in the middle of the night and shake you to your core. Bert's future continues to be anything but certain. There are more doctor's visits and surgery looming off in the horizon. But in this moment, with the throttle forward and miles of open ocean ahead of him, he's just another boater enjoying time on the water, surrounded by friends and family. In this moment, bird is free.